even though we as Christians may be in the vast minority. In a 2020 survey, 65% of adults in the United States identified them as Christians. I, I can't even call that ignorance at that point. That's just a lie. That's just lying. We are spending more of our time arguing over women pastors. We spend too much time arguing about women pastors, even though I've got at least two videos about how women shouldn't be pastors. Is he just like assuming we're stupid? Hello, lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. I am sorry if my coffee makes anyone nervous. I think the camera angle makes it look worse because I never do spill it when I'm sloshing it around like this, but it looks on camera like it's gonna go any second. I promise it's okay. I did not spill coffee immediately before filming. Today we're going to be looking at an Alan Parr video. We have looked at him once before. I'll put a, a card so you can view that if you've not seen it already. He has this channel called The Beat by Alan Parr, which from what we've seen so far is pretty much just telling Christian parents to be afraid of everything because it's all Satan. It's all Satan. Technology, Satan, everything's bad. It's very old man yells at cloud. I intend it to review Alan Parr again because I had flagged a video of his called If Your Church Has a Female Co-Pastor, Leave Now or something like that and I thought, here we go with the biblical sexism. But when I went on his channel to just see what he had been up to lately, I saw he had done a video for Pride or inspired by pride, which has just passed. We're a little bit late, but you know, sue me. I could not pass this video by without commenting on it. Just based on the title, the description, the astoundingly cringy thumbnail, what I gather is that Alan Parr thinks that Christians should be like the LGBTQ plus community by being loud and proud, which on the face of it sounds okay. I feel a little bit weird about him using pride and the term coming out and the rainbow flag and everything to be like what if we what if we the largest religion in the world took this minority group stuff and used it for us that's a little bit how i feel i don't think that you can appropriate something like a rainbow i think you could use that for all sorts of things but he is obviously doing this during pride with lgbtq plus in the title and his thumbnail is like christians should come out like he's deliberately taking <laughs> LGBTQ plus language, the less remember, pride is about celebrating the fight for our right to exist safely and happily and the fight for equal rights, which queer people still don't have in a lot of places. And kind of taking that as a little jokey, haha, Christians should do we Christians should use their ideas. The other thing that rubs me the wrong way, and maybe this will be different in the video too, we'll see, but the other thing that I'm watching out for is the way that the title is written, this is how Christians need to be more like the LGBTQ plus community, implies there's no crossover. It's like, there is Christians here, and there are LGBTQ people here, and there's no middle ground. And I just think that if that is his attitude, maybe it's just a badly worded title and description, but if that is his attitude, that's going to alienate a lot of queer Christians in his audience or uh, queer children of Christian viewers of his, you know? So that's kind of my, those are my chief concerns. Aside from just cringe, <laughs> those are my main concerns. Because as usual, we are diving into weird videos on the internet. I think this is a very good time to talk about internet safety with the help of today's sponsor and my buddy Jasper. This is Jasper. Jasper likes his privacy. That goes for offline and online. That's why we use Surfshark VPN to secure our data. Surfshark automatically blocks known malicious websites, phishing methods, and other threats. Surfshark also lets you bypass geo restrictions on your favourite content. Don't cry, buddy. Here, turn on the VPN, and away we go! <coughs> Surfshark can keep you safe even on public Wi Fi, including safely accessing your bank account. Jasper? Jasper, that's my bank account. Jasper, what are you doing? Jasper, no! Surfshark is super easy to use, even for a puppet. If you join with the link down below and use the code Emma Thorne, you can get 83% off and three extra months free. Fine, Jasper. Here, 
So remember to turn on the VPN. I've got cute new earrings and I got really excited to wear them, but I'm gonna have to take them off so I can listen to bloody Alan Parr. Here we go, the beat by Alan Parr. This is how Christians need to be more like the LGBTQ plus community. It's time for Christians to come out. What's up, y'all? I knew he was gonna I knew he was gonna do it. I didn't expect him to do it in the first one second, but I knew he was gonna do it. So Pride Month is here, and this is a month of the year where members of the LGBTQ plus community, I think I got all the letters and symbols right, celebrate with- It's very funny to make fun of all the letters. He can apparently remember the whole Bible. I think he can do five letters. But, you know, it's a funny joke to make because these, these quiz and their letters are so funny, aren't they? <laughs> with great pride, the freedom that they have- Ooh! Pride. So I go into so many videos saying I need a bingo card. I need like a blanket bingo card for just all videos because inappropriate use of air quotes. Ooh. Have to finally express who they believe they are now. Who they believe they are. Oh, oh no! It is going to be subtly homophobic. I was kind of hopeful his use of the correct letters genuinely in the title made me think that actually this wasn't going to be homophobic but it's going to be subtly homophobic it's going to be they're proud of who they believe they are if you were born straight alan parr i was born by all right move on now, in recent years there is a term that has become more and more popular it is the word out and essentially for decades, members of this community would live in secrecy and in shame, in fear that if people really knew who they identified to be, that they would be- Who they who they are. Who I identify to be is, is who I am. I'm not conjuring the personality trait of finding women attractive. Ostracized and maybe even publicly humiliated, but now- Killed. Or killed. It was only like five, ten years ago that our government apologised to Alan Turing for what happened to him as a result of being homosexual. In a lot of places it's still illegal and punishable to that extent. Nowadays, it is not so. There is no shame. There is no secrecy. People are coming- This is a mix of two things. This is a mix of Americans thinking the entire world is America and straight dude being like the gays are everywhere these days back in my day they had to stay quiet but now that they're, they're everywhere they're loud and proud god jeez god taken over the world unfortunately plenty of my peers are still not out because they would be ostracized by family by religious groups uh by the country that they live in a lot of people aren't out because they just fear that it might make their work life awkward or um, their friends might treat them differently. It wasn't like we had Stonewall and then all queer rights forever across the whole world. Now it's all great and lovely. We can be who we believe we are. This is, so it's not too homophobic. It is deeply ignorant so far. And out. People like Sue Bird, people like Megan Rapino, people like Candace Parker, and so many other people are simply coming out and expressing who they believe they are. I wonder if he, like, has a list of names of people who have come out as straight. You see, the fact that he identifies these, like, shocking revelations of people getting married equals coming out and being something surprising, that, that proves that there isn't equality, that there's not this complete lack of shame and lack of secrecy. There's, there's still a stigma. He's got no fucking self-awareness. They are. And even though they are still within the vast minority in the world, they are still willing to endure public scrutiny and criticism for what they believe. So my challenge is- Not for what they believe, for who they are. For real? I haven't done any- I did a comments video where I talked about being bi and I had the flag and we kind of talked about some of the erasure that I experienced online. I haven't done an actual- queer focused video this pride season but part of the reason that i haven't done that is because i still regularly and it's been worse lately i think it's because i have an american a largely american audience and because america seems to be taking a step backwards in terms of social progress i have been getting so much homophobia biphobia sexism just 
erasure, just queer identity erasure. It's exhausting. <laughs> it's genuinely. Ex- I don't know how to explain this to people who don't, who haven't experienced it in any way. I think you can experience this in a lot of different ways. So a lot of people will be able to identify with this feeling if it's even if it's not about being queer. It is genuinely exhausting. Like like the last month, say. I'm super tired of being a woman and being a queer person on the internet because I just know that I wouldn't have to deal with this huge chunk of bullshit if I wasn't. And that sucks because we should be proud to be who we are. There shouldn't be any of these barriers. So for somebody like Alan Parr to just be like, yeah, it's all fine and good now. They they got equal rights. Everything's good and dandy. There's no issues of equality here anywhere. It makes me kind of cross. It just frustrates me that so often the anti-queer pr- propaganda, I want to say, just writes us off as everything's equal now what more do you want and it's the same with women's rights and i like i said i get sexism homophobia i get transphobia just the the level of bigotry you get that's why we still need pride or at least that's why we still need queer activism right that's why we're here okay so in my opinion alan parr needs to do some shutting up and listening in this video is where are the christians Will the real Christians- Where the hell are the Christians? This is a good opportunity to pipe up in the comments section if you are a Christian. Christianity is everywhere in the USA right now. For Alan Parr to pretend that the queers have equal rights and they're all out and there's no shame or hiding anywhere, but Christians, where the hell are they? It's like he's being deliberately backwards. Like there's got to be some deliberate ignorance here, right? You can't, he he can't be that unaware of his own country. There's no way. He's got to be doing this on purpose. Stand up and come out. And in these three ways, I believe that Christians need to take a page out of the LGBTQ plus community and be more like them. Here. More like them. Because there's, again, no crossover. If you are Christian, and queer, please, please let yourself be known in the comments if you feel safe and comfortable doing so. There it is. And the first way is bold. We saw this in the last time we looked at Alan Parr. It's really, really cringy. Alan Parr has very clearly watched or read a lot of stuff about how to make uh, more clickable content on YouTube. But that results in this kind of buzzfeedy, ridiculous, like, Everything is a list. These are the top 10 things Christians need to fear today. And then there'll be like a lower third that'll come and be like, number one, farty fart pants. Listen, we need more Christians to be bold and outspoken about what we believe. We need more Christians to take a stand against abortion. We need- Ooh. <laughs> that was a very weird sound. That sound is how I feel about that. Once again, I'd love to appeal to anyone in the comments who is Christian and pro-choice. Christians are not all anti-choice. Alan Parr, you do not have group one, which is people who believe literally exactly all the same things that you do, and then others. You gotta stop putting everyone in little boxes, Alan. We need more Christians to- And we don't need that. That's the last thing we need. Have you seen what abortion clinics go through? Uh, abortion clinics can be for more than just abortion. You've got stuff like Planned Parenthood, which also does safe sex and education, um, provides you with stuff to prevent abortions being necessary. And they try and defund Planned Parenthood when the majority of, say, Planned Parenthood's work is providing healthcare solutions that would prevent more abortions. Because they're not thinking logically, they're just thinking through hate. People go to have these medical procedures that they have the absolute right to. And we're not gonna have an argument today about bodily autonomy because this is a different video. But people go to have these procedures for whatever reason it is, even if it's say a reason that an anti-choice person might consider acceptable, like it's medically necessary to save the mother, they will still go to the abortion clinic that is picketed by angry, bigoted Christians, like the ones that Alan Parr is calling for more of, and they will be harassed and shouted at I read a story literally the other day, I will find it and link it down below if I can, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find it. And it was a woman talking about how she put off having an abortion so 
many times until it became very, very clear that her child just wouldn't live. It wasn't growing, but she did everything she could, putting her life at risk and getting more and more dangerous as the more time went by. Eventually, she had to have an abortion. The child was never going to live. And people were picketing the abortion clinic and shouting horrific abuse at her. They were shouting at her son saying, your mother's a murderer. We do not, we do not need more people like that. I don't care whether you're pro or anti-choice. We do not need more people picketing necessary medical procedures. That's fucked up. Because whatever you believe, you are going to hurt innocent people. I think they're all innocent people who have the right to their own bodies, but whoever you consider the innocent party that would be acceptable by encouraging those people, you're still going to hurt them. Fuck off, Alan Parr. I didn't expect him to just casually bring up abortion in such a callous fucking awful way and encourage this hideous behaviour. So now I'm super mad and I didn't expect to be. Thanks, Alan. To take a stand against same-sex marriages. We need more Christians who are... But what about the gay Christians, Alan? They're not going to want to stand against same-sex marriage, are they? I know lots of Christians would heartily disagree with pretty much everything he's saying here, even though he's putting you, the Christian, in his camp. Bold enough to tell good, upright, moral people that if they do not believe in Jesus Christ, they will spend an eternity apart from God. But instead, we shy away from from these conversations in fear that we might be called intolerant or bigoted or we might offend some but you are intolerant and bigoted you've just said you don't want women to have access to vital health care and bodily autonomy you don't want queer people to have the same rights that straight people do that is bigotry that's intolerance you're called that because you are it some of our friends our co-workers or even the people who live on the same street as a isn't that so fucking funny that that's exactly what I was trying to explain to Alan Parr is the reason that not all queer people are out of the closet? I'm trying to get across to him the fear not only for their lives, fear of being labelled something that is unpleasant, uh, fear of their friends, families, co-workers treating them differently is why not all queer people are out of the closet. And he's like, and Christians can't come out because of these reasons. Empathy, Alan. Empathy. As a matter of fact, 52% of all professing Christians believe that there is some other faith that will lead to eternal life other than Christians. That's great news. I didn't expect Alan Parr to bring me such great news. That means 52% of American Christians are willing to let other, other people have their faith. That's made my day. Granted, this is clearly from 2008, but still. Christianity. Listen, if we are going to make a difference in this world, we need to take a page out of the LGBTQ plus community handbook, and we need to be as bold, as even bolder than they are, because we possess the truth that leads to bolder than they are because we possess the truth and they just believe that they're homosexual or something. Alan. Real true life. So my question to you is, even though we as Christians may be in the vast minority, are you willing to take a stand and be public? Alan's using Pew Research Center for his statistics, so I'll use Pew Research Center as well. In a 2020 survey, 65% of adults in the United States identified them as Christians. Is he being deliberately ignorant again when he is... Because there's this thing, right? And again, it's kind of... It's kind of biblical. It's kind of a cross between a bit biblical and this kind of religious persecution complex. There is this feeling among major religious groups, like Christianity and then different sects thereof, they should be the underdog. They are the ones that are persecuted. They are the minority that has to stand up and fight for what they believe in. But that's still deliberate ignorance when 65% of your country is Christian. To, to pretend that you're the minority when two seconds on Google reveals that that is absolute horse shit. I, I can't even call that ignorance at that point. That's just a lie. That's just lying. Public and outspoken for your faith with a sense of boldness even if it means that you might have to endure some sort of public criticism or might be labeled in a way that leads you to actually feel as though you are being ostracized from others around you. 
Oh, imagine being ostracized for your intolerant views. How sad. Right. Okay, so here's the thing, right? And here's the problem I have with professing Christians, which is what Alan calls Christians that don't agree with him. I would say that Alan is a professing Christian because of this reason. If you're asking Christians to come out and be bold about Jesus's main messages, right? Love thy neighbour. Forgive people who have wronged you. Love your enemies. Don't judge others. The poor and the meek will inherit the earth, not the rich and the powerful. Hello televangelism. Right, if you genuinely wanted more believers to come out and be open and spread those messages, that would be fucking awesome. Nowhere on Jesus's main list of teachings is taking away healthcare from women or unequal rights depending on your sexuality or your gender. He's the most important figure in your religion. Following him is meant to be the entire jam. So why, Alan Parr, are you so focused on what is, more or less, a current political issue with Christianity? It's a hot-button topic right now to cause people to be angry, to cause people to vote a certain way. Why is that more important than Jesus's actual teachings? Even as an atheist, I think that this man's approach to being a loud and proud Christian is bullshit. Correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't seen any videos where Alan Parr talks about sexual abuse in churches, despite that being an ongoing big issue that actually affects Christian people and is a lot more serious than, say, allowing the gays equal rights. He's a hypocrite that focuses on what is politically popular to get clicks on YouTube. The second way that I believe that Christians need to be more like the LGBTQ plus community is not only in boldness, but in influence. Listen, that community is finding creative ways to infiltrate every single fabric. Infiltrate? There's no negative connotations there. We're infiltrating your lives. We're going to turn the kids gay and trans and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> of our culture, whether it's the media, you can't even turn on any sort of TV show nowadays without that agenda being slipped into. Ah! Queer people existing is not an agenda. Alan, there are more people of color than ever before on TV. Is that an agenda or is it a push towards equality? Alan, there are more people with disabilities than ever before on TV. Is that an agenda? Or is it a push for equality? Are we just trying to represent the people that exist? It's not an agenda when there are a record number of straight people on TV. To the media, to where you can't even let your children watch basic shows without seeing a same-sex couple, that representation there, even in our- You can't, okay. So wow, that's overt. Alan Parr specifically does not think you should let your children watch TV that shows same-sex couples. I really just, this kind of channel upsets me so much because he's specifically targeting parents through fear. And like the entire goal, maybe not Alan Parr specifically, his goal might just be financial. His goal might be to hit a certain number of views on YouTube. He might genuinely believe what he says and it might be some sort of spiritual goal. I don't know. But the goal of this movement is to create a new generation of intolerant Christians. Christian children who have been kept in a bubble away from other people, that's why they push for homeschooling too. They get a religious education, they're not allowed to watch TV that shows any same-sex couple ever, so they naturally perceive these things as other and frightening. They've never met anyone like that, they've never seen anyone like that, they've just been taught that it is wrong, and that breeds bigots. That breeds a little army of Christian bigots. And that is what a lot of these people, a lot of them, overtly campaign for. Alan Parr, more subtly so. Although less, less subtle by the minute. In our schools, even in our communities, in every facet of our community, they are finding ways, even though they are the... That said, gender swap day. All right, let's just go back to that a second. Gender Swap Day at Hong Kong School taught students about empathy, struggles of the opposite sex, and objectification. Alan, did you fucking read what you put on the screen? He's just put a big arrow towards gender, as if that makes it queer. There's nothing queer about this. This is about women's rights. This is about objectification. And again, ironically, it's about empathy, which Alan Parr has not demonstrated any abilities in. God, he's so... He's got to be doing it on purpose. 
This can't be accidental. Of our community, they are finding ways, even though they are the vast minority, even though most- I thought you were the vast minority. I'm pretty sure vast minority is an oxymoron anyway, Alan. Most people in this country are still strongly opposed to that type of lifestyle. They are finding ways to influence- Is that true? It's probably becoming more true by the day because of, again, political propaganda. I mean, I hope that the majority of the USA is not against the agenda of queer people existing. ...and infiltrate and get their agenda across. And yet we- All of the- he's- he's ask- he's literally asking, this is three things that Christians should do that the LGBTQ plus community is doing. He's literally saying, this is what they do, we should do that. And yet, he uses all of the negative language, all of the worst connotations to describe the queer community, and then all of the poor, persecuted underdog language when he's asking Christians to do the exact same thing. That's fucking despicable propaganda. It is. We as Christians largely exist in an echo chamber where we're basically just influencing other Christians who already believe the same way as we do. He acknowledged that his particular group of Christians exist in an echo chamber. That is why, Alan, it's a bad idea to prevent your children from even watching TV with same-sex couples in it. You know, an echo chamber is a bad thing, Alan. But his idea of an echo chamber being bad is because he's not influencing enough people. How can we find a way to infiltrate and influence the culture with what we believe, even though what we believe goes against the grain and goes against what the vast majority of the people in this world actually believe? And then the Third and final way that I would love to see more Christians take a page out of the LGBTQ plus handbook is being more- Can I get a copy of this handbook? I've never been given one. Is that some sort of initiation thing you get at Pride? How have I missed out on this? Unified, listen, even though they are small in number, they are unified with the- I almost don't want to point this out because this feels like a point in Alan's favor. The LGBTQ plus community is not unified. You've got stuff like the LGB Alliance, so many transphobic groups. You've got like gold star lesbianism. For as long as I've been a person, there's been arguments over the words pansexual and bisexual and who can identify as what and what they really mean. There's never a complete unification in a group that is so vast. You're never gonna unify all queer people, just like you're never gonna unify all Christians. I'm really hoping, and I'm 99% confident, that a lot of the Christians watching this video absolutely do not agree with a lot of what Alan Parr says, because it is hateful and hurtful. They common vision, they want equal rights, they want freedom, they want represent- How can he sit there, genuinely, how can he sit there and say they want equal rights, they want representation? In a video where he's saying that those things are bad, that it's wrong, and that more Christians need to campaign against these people for wanting equal rights and equal representation. How fucked up is that? Representation, they want to be heard, they want- Like imagine if I did a video that was all about how can the LGBT plus community unify against Christians? How can we stop Christians practicing their faith. They shouldn't be allowed to go to church. I would never do that because I think that's fucked up and I think people have the right to practice their religion and enjoy their beliefs personally in a way that doesn't remove rights from other people. Alan Parr and Christians of this kind in general, they don't have that kind of empathy. How could a, an empathetic human being be like, these people want equal rights. They want to exist safely and have representation. We gotta stop them. They want all of these different things and they are unified in their approach. They are you- We're not. I'd love it if that was true, but it's just not. Unified in the way they come together and try to influence this culture. But instead, we as Christians in the body of Christ are so divided because we are spending more of our time arguing over women pastors, we're arguing over tongues, we're arguing over Calvinism and Arminianism, we're arguing over eternal security, baptismal regeneration, and a whole bunch of other things. We spend too much time arguing about this topic that I specifically profit from. We spend too much time arguing about women pastors, 
even though I've got at least two videos about how women shouldn't be pastors. Does he think we don't know? Is he just, like, assuming we're stupid? Things, whether it's race, whether it's politics, you name it, Christians are divided. And as long as we are divided and not unified, we are not going to be able to- Right, but the reason that you'll never be unified, Alan, is because your idea of unification is all other Christians believing what you believe. You will never change and adapt your views to accept Christians who are different to you. So how can you expect other Christians to do the same in reverse? He wants the world to change for him personally. That is what he wants. And he's not gonna get it. So he's never gonna get unification. Actually infiltrate this world with the core message of the gospel, which many of us, or should be all of us in the body of Christ, actually agree on. And that is the fact that Jesus Christ came into this world to save a world of sinners. So my message- Then shut the fuck up about queer rights and banning women from being pastors and focus on that. Stop. If, if that's the problem, Alan, that Christians are too focused on arguing about whether women should be pastors, stop talking about it then. Let women be pastors, let queer people have equal rights, and focus on the important topic of Jesus. Follow your own fucking advice. Message to you, Mr. or Mrs. Christian, is that it is time to come out. Mr. or Mrs. Christian. It's for married parents. His content is for married parents. So that they can influence their young children. It's disgusting. It's really disgusting. Closet. Stop living this secret agent Christian life where most people around you really don't know you're a Christian because you are afraid to ruffle the feathers. You are afraid to take a stand. You are afraid to offend the people who live on your street. If you have a view that actively impacts someone's human rights, you should be afraid to voice that because of course you're going to get backlash because the one thing we can't fucking tolerate, Alan, is intolerance. And this is what a lot of people don't understand as well about the queer community, among others, is that it's a, it's a fight. It is a fight. The reason that we are out and proud is because we are actively fighting against people like you who are trying to take away our human rights. We have to fight against you. We have to tell our boss that you've been bigoted at work, right? We have to stop you infiltrating the school system because otherwise you are trying to impose a theocracy, basically, that takes away the rights that you have that I should share because we're both human beings. In your community, at your job, we should be celebrating pride every day. Every day and every month should be a pride day and a pride month. You should be proud of who you are. Whether that includes your faith is up to you. You should be comfortable and in my experience christian people are in this country and in the usa christian people are the most comfortable talking about their personal convictions they feel very secure because they know that they are not in the minority alan you fucking liar and that's fine you should feel safe saying i believe that jesus is my savior that's perfectly fine because that doesn't impact my rights when you say i believe that jesus is my savior and you shouldn't be allowed to get married that's when we have a fucking problem. Listen, the Bible says that we should be not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. So what about to the gay? Christians, it's time to come out. Oh God, I'm getting an advert for Church of Jesus Christ. No, that, that's Alan. <laughs> way worse than I could have predicted. The way he talks about queer people, the way he acknowledges that what we want is equal rights and that that is not okay and that he thinks Christians should stand against that. Even the way he talks to and about other Christians, the way that he just wants every Christian in the world to believe exactly what he believes and that that's how they should be unified. It makes me angry just on so many levels. I'm just so sad. I really, I genuinely, if you're a Christian and you think that Alan's opinions here are fucked up, please let me know in the comments. It will make me feel so much better to see some genuine support for the LGBTQ plus community. I'd really love to hear from queer Christian people. I mean, I want to hear from other queer people in general as well. Alan thinks that we have absolutely no hardships in life that 
one day we suddenly got equal rights and now everything is totally equal and fair, except for representation on the media, of which there should be none, because I guess we only believe we're queer and... I don't know, I don't even know what his beliefs are, what his agenda is there. It seems contradictory in some ways, it's confusing, it's quite thinly veiled hate speech. It is. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed some of this. Let me know if you want me to check out more Alan Parr. Like I said, he did have a video on women shouldn't be co-pastors, even though he basically said in this video that it's wasting time to talk about that stuff and to argue and disagree about that stuff. I guess it doesn't count when he does it. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Let me know if you would like me to check out that or other videos of his. He is exhausting. He is cringy. His content is very what's up fellow kids. It is cringe like that. But I will check out more if you so wish, because I love you. That was too much. That was too much. I apologise. That was too forward. I'm going to take a step back. Before we go, I would like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and I would like to give a huge shout out to my giant chickens over on Patreon. A very confused looking badger, all tag, amalgam of neuroses, amber, Andy is ducking around, April Washburn, Azku, Baked Bads, Burt Whitehead, Bill Garrett, Bruce Nemanic, Cackles the Spoopy Newbie, Chantel, Charlie Edwins, Chris Simpson, Connie Wright, Connor, Chicken Maximus Lions. God damn it, Connor. Curious Quacker, Daftwood, Dave Kircher, Denny5252, Dr. Min, Dreffid, Dylan Sweetland, Eamon Sheridan, L, Ephemeral Entropy Buffer, Falcor the Ginger, Fay the Succubus, Flash Prez Blue Wolf, Fulcrum Gaming Ridge, Gay of Reckoning, George Bush, GM, Gravy, Henry Curtis, Hi My Name is Spoon, Izzy, Jam Bojarp, Jason Metcalf, Jeremy Buck, Joe Rowe, John Fry, John Smith, Kent Woodward, Kike, Kiwi Satan, Christian Varga, Laughing Sisyphus, Lizzie Gale, Lord Nibbles Dankworth the Ninth, Mark Threlfall, Mattis McChicken Nuggetus, Miles Tegg, Moonwraith, Mr. Smith, Mr. Creosote, Neve Coughlin, Ninja Red, MPC, Null Unit, Paul McGinty, Piao Meow Noir, Peter Kirouac, Plux, Psyched Dude, Rasputom, Rosina Keller, RPG MP3, Sam's Bro 1952, Sarah Shabby, Sean, Sean Hamill, Silicon Self, Silly Christie, Simping on Emma Thorne, Seriously, Tank Low, Taxman, The Shropshire Lad, Thomas V. Lohmeyer, Timothy Avery, Tracy O'Raw, Valerie, Wasatch Witch, William Witt, Zabbat, and Zeroless. Thank you so much for your support. You guys are amazing. I hope you have a very lovely week, and I will see you really soon.